our trip would take us to Tuttle Marsh. As our day of birding was slowly coming to a close, we would finish in the most unusual manner. Kayaks would be our source of viewing and listening to Mother Nature's soothing music, her beautiful birds. Our guide would be Sue Malski, a local birder and researcher. We would also be accompanied by Adam Hume. Adam owns Oscoda Canoe Rentals and represents Al Sabo River Kayaks who supplied our kayaks. Tuttle Marsh is a 5,000 acre wetland project located in the Huron Manistee National Forest on Old US 23 and Tuttle Marsh Road. The site includes a 380 acre impoundment area, open water, marsh, and wildlife viewing areas. Deer, fox, coyote, muskrat, beaver, otter, weasel, and a large variety of bird species are located here. Tuttle Marsh is made up of 5,600 acres, and uh, 400 acres of it is uh, pretty much wetlands. Okay. Uh, there's a spillway about halfway through down here um, that holds the water. Um, the bad thing is we've had some dry summers, and in the, by fall there's uh, very little water left here. Really? Yeah, very little water left by fall. Um, but you know, it offers other opportunities. You get shorebirds that love the uh, the mud flats. Okay. The so, herons, uh, the waders and yep, the like waders that, that love the frogs. So, uh, it just brings in a different habit, you know, a different group of birds for the fall season. Now, you showed me a paper when we came in that listed all the bird types that are found here, and that was an extensive list. Yes, that was <laughs> Do you know taken. How long it is? That no, I don't know the exact number on there, but um, that was done by uh, two friends of mine, Jim and Carolyn Stevens, and myself, and we did that probably over a ten-year period, and uh, we still do it. We mark down every bird that we see in the marsh. Um, any time that we're out here. Um, so it gives the Forest Service an opportunity to know what species are using this wetland so you area. Tell them what you're finding there. Yes, they were the ones that actually um, did that brochure um, with our information. Okay. In spots it does get very weedy. Um, there used to be nice sized pike in here, um, but with the last couple of years of drying up, um, there's a lot of bullheads. I've noticed a lot of the ospreys have pulled out bullheads and uh, okay, things so like that for its, its good food form, yep. We have some song sparrows calling over here. Now tell me, how long does it take you to be able to look out and see these birds flying across and know exactly what they are? Well, I'm a duck hunter, so uh, I learned a long time ago that I have to ID my uh, birds uh, before I can shoot them, and that was probably my best uh, education. Well, <laughs> and I've taken up birding now. I haven't duck hunted in a couple years, but... I have to credit my hunting. <laughs> we have a lot of swallows right now, um, tree swallows and, and barn swallows that are feeding on the insects. Okay, something like this flew by here? Yep, and we've heard some red-winged blackbirds calling and birding by ear makes uh, birding a lot more challenging and fun because so many times you don't see the bird, but if you know it's call or it's sound monomics, you know what you're looking for. Okay. So that does help. You know, holds a lot of the tag alder, a lot of, you know, you can find sandhill cranes up in that area. Uh, a lot of the wading birds end up in there. Uh, American bitterns, leaf bitterns. Um, I hope we hear some tonight. It would be great. I don't believe in um, a lot of this new technology because I hate to pull birds off of their nest at this time of year and use those sound devices. Spring is my favorite time of the year, I think. This is an excellent time to be up here. It, yeah. It's good for a lot of reasons, too, I, I suppose, because uh, it is the time that the birds are nesting, and, and we are getting uh, the birds that uh, stay here year-round, or, or at least during the uh, summer, but we're also getting the migratory, migratory. birds that are moving through. That's right. And yeah. I guess spring, I look at, is everything's coming to life, you know? They yeah. survive the winter, and, and they're happy, and they're they're doing their calls, and mating calls, and... And usually there's not many people. No. <laughs> so no, that's, that's what's time nice. That too. That's right. I can hear a yellow warbler. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is the new osprey, uh, osprey nest, actually. And uh, what's really nice about this is it's it built it on its own. It's uh, a natural nest that something could have uh, got into it one night, going after their eggs for food. Uh, it's early enough, they'll probably uh, be able to uh, 
to lay some more eggs. Um, whether they're going to lay them in, in this nest or not, I don't know. With already having a, a predator get into them, they may move and, and build another nest. Uh, the Sora rail, the bittern, uh, the pied billed greaves. Uh, we've seen, you know, the green winged teal was really nice to see here. We know the, the female is sitting on a nest, so uh, that's good. Well, I hope you enjoyed our show of springtime birding in the Ascoda area. It's a great place to come up to. If you live in southern Michigan, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to get up here. As you can see, it's a lot of fun. It's a great time to be up here, the springtime when it's not crowded yet. Most people don't even think about coming out at this time, but it's a beautiful time to be up here. It's a great time to come up and do this type of uh, action where we're out here doing this birding. It's phenomenal the different things that you see. We've, we've seen osprey, we've seen eagle, and we've seen a variety of other birds and a variety of other wildlife that's up here. And it's just magnificent. It's quiet. Everything is coming to life at this time of the year and it's a great time to be here. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on Great Getaways. If you enjoyed today's show and would like more information for your own great getaway, you can get a free guide to nature opportunities in the Ascoda area from the number on your screen. You can also get instant information at our website, including video clips of today's show, including information that we put together on what to bring and how much time to allow for each part of the trip.